championship as you see from the caption already well and truly won by Dean Askin from Huddersfield there he is who on his 350cc Yamaha has dominated the series with four wins two second places a fourth place man of the meeting at Brands Hatch and has to be a hot favorite for this race behind him on the table is Kevin Maudsley and he's alongside Dean Askin on the grid and it's going to be a kick start and away and this is absolutely crucial of course because when the lights go to green down goes the right leg on the kick starter crank to put the two stroke twin cylinder engine into motion and produce in the process some 65 brake horsepower which will propel them at about 130 miles an hour down the hangar straight. Ten laps the race, a lap record held by Rob Orr, and watch for the green, 99.4 miles an hour is the lap record, and it looks as though Kevin Mortal has made a good start from second on the grid, already tucked into the bubble, the Perspex windscreen atop the fairing, everybody round Cops Corner safely, now... So now the leader goes in down to the right hander at Beckett's. Well, what's looking like a terrific high speed traffic jam is unsurprisingly, in view of the past races in the series this year, being led by championship man Dean Askin who can't possibly be caught 65 points is held by the second place man in the championship Kevin Maudsley and Dean Askin has already scored 92 points he's the 250 cc production champion and he's the 350 cc production champion of 1985 having finished second in both championships last year and third in the 250 the year before so he's getting better and better year by year he can't get any better than he's done this year with two championships under his belt but is it going to be a fifth win in the series the nine race series for Dean Askin from Huddersfield lap one then conditions absolutely perfect for this 10 lap race I wonder if we're going to have a new lap record We've had them in virtually every race this year, and this is a lot closer than I was expecting it to be. Over the line, and in the lead now is Terry Reimer. This is sensational, because Terry Reimer is a man who hasn't done well in this championship this year, simply because he hasn't ridden in it very much. But 18-year-old Terry Reimer from Lee Green has already won four championships this year, He's won the 350 and 500 cc Bemsey championships this year and two of the other championships as well. He went out in practice today and he broke the lap record unofficially in practice every lap. And tucked up behind him now is Kevin Maudsley in second position. There was a forecast that this would be a cracker of a race and uh, young Terry Reimer adopting what some may regard as some pretty questionable tactics as he goes down the hangar straight, weaving on the second lap in this 10 lap race and looking a bit ragged in the process. Kevin Mortley in second position and championship leader Dean Askin in third place. So the battle is well and truly joined and Terry Reimer on his way to a lap record, I wouldn't be surprised. 1 minute 46 is the lap record and that's a speed of 99.4 Kevin Mortley behind him trying to go through on the inside at Abbey and they take Abbey on these 350 production machines at uh, about 120 miles an hour believe it or not and these are machines that you can go and buy and Mortley is going for it as they go into the right hand at the end of the lap at Woodcote and over the line now goes number 17 Reimer into Cox. This is lap three. Second place, Kevin Maudsley. Dropping back in third position, the championship winner, Dean Askin. In fourth place, it's Andy Green. They're all on Yamahas. Every rider in this race is on a 350cc Yamaha. And in fifth position, it's Adrian Jupp. But look at the way the first three are going. Data Beckett's. 
18 years old, the leader, Terry Reimer. As I say, he's a graduate of the Brands Hatch School of Racing. He broke the lap record unofficially every lap in practice, this young man from Lee Green. He's hoping to go on and race in the 500cc International Series next year on a 500cc Suzuki. And if he, go, if he keeps riding like this, he's going to be a man to watch in international racing in the future. Not looking at all wild now, but Kevin Mortal is right there with him. Dean Eskin is with both of them. And Dean Eskin's coming out of Mortley's slipstream and trying to take second position, but failing to do so. Lap three, ten lap race. Look at the way that Reimer gets his leg right out on the corners. That's partly to help waste weight distribution. And it's a sort of psychological prop as well. Helps to slow you up a bit on the corners if you need to. Extra wind resistance. So, Reimer leads. More to the second. Askin third. And two and three are second and first in the championship. That's another race completed. Lap record, one minute 46. Reimer's time. I can't believe this. One minute 42.94. Terry Reimer, if my head timing is right, has shattered the lap record by some four seconds. And one minute 42. And more to the going through and Reimer right up onto the grass at 1 minute 42.9 is a lap time of 102.4 that is the first 100 mile an hour lap in this 350 series in history and it's broken the lap record by some 3 miles an hour an incredible performance by Terry Reimer but Kevin Mortley is going no slower and nor is Dean Askin and it's still Reimer Mortley second, Askin third Nearly 200 horsepower between those three motors, and they're alongside each other as they go down to Stowe, and Askin goes up into second position. And back into second position goes Kevin Mortley. Right on the side walls of their tyres, lap four. Reimer nearly, nearly lost it there. He's just about on the dividing line between maximum speed and disaster, and it's a very, very narrow line. And through into the lead goes Kevin Maudsley, right up alongside Reimer goes Dean Askin, and this is Maudsley's chance to break away, he's got the momentum, but, but Reimer's having nothing of it. Back into the lead goes the young man from Lee Green. One, two, three, alongside, and my goodness, that's, that's Maudsley into the lead again, 1 minute 43.5, the lap record has gone again, this is well over 100, it's going to be a 100 mile an hour average, and, and the lap record before was under 100 miles an hour, and the lap record is going to be left at about 103 miles an hour, this is the half distance lap. Into the hangar straight, this is the fastest part of the course, this is... So, approaching the hangar straight, Beckett's corner, the right-hander, that's the slowest corner on the course, that's about 70 miles an hour. And it's Kevin Maudsley, number two, who comes from Blackpool, who's won twice this year, has finished second once, third once, man of the meeting at Thruxton. The races in the series, by the way, have been held at Snetterton, Thruxton, Brands Hatch, Cadwell, and Dean Askin is leading. Now the champion, Dean Askin, with four wins, momentarily leads. But how much longer is he going to stay there? On lap five. And they were held at Cadwell, Lydon, Donny. Carnaby, Mallory, and now the climax, and what a climax, is on the Grand Prix circuit, 2.39, 2.93 miles at Silverstone in blue perfect weather conditions. Dean Askin, number one from Huddersfield, leads. Maudsley from Blackpool, and Reimer from Lee Green, London, second and third, but they could change any second now. And they do so, because Reimer is coming up alongside and taking second position from Kevin Maudsley. Reimer goes through in second position, over the line, in the lead now, goes Kevin Maudsley. Dean Askin is down to third position. Back into the lead again goes Maudsley and Reimer virtually together. 
and these riders of course really have to trust each other because they are riding as I just said on that infinitesimally thin dividing line between racing disaster and maximum speed and if they do not trust each other that could bring the big problem of going off onto the grass off the circuit into the straw bales and I emphasize that the Silverstone circuit and ACU organizers have made sure that there are straw bales in front of the Armco at all the diff difficult points and so now now it's Terry Reimer back into the lead on lap six. Behind him, Kevin Maudsley. It's down to third position, the man who led for a while, Dean Askin, the champion. And Reimer, who's not had any victories in this season at all, looks as though, if he goes on the way he's going now, he's going to win the most important race of the lot in the... Marlborough Dunlop Express Clubman Championship of 350 production machines this year, the final. Look at him. A man for the future, definitely. His father looks after his machine, and Dad can be very, very proud of the way he does it. Rhymer looks over his shoulder, and he sees Maudsley and Askin right with him. That'll give him an emphasis to go even faster if he can. It's Kevin Maudsley, number two, in second position. We're coming through to complete now the sixth lap. And over the line goes Rhymer. One minute, 42.9. My goodness, 1 minute 42.9, and that is 102.4 miles an hour. The lap record hasn't been broken, it's been smashed to smithereens. Reimer goes a bit too wide there. Mortley gets alongside him, but Reimer's back on the circuit, off the ridge bars, which separated at that point where he went off masterly recovery and Maudsley weaving under braking braking as hard as he can disc brake at the front of course and that's what absorbs most of the braking on a motorcycle you don't use the back brake very much and Dean Askins race looks as though it is run he's still going jolly quick but Reimer and Maudsley are breaking away from Dean Askin the Huddersfield rider riding at lap record, lap shattering speed. Lap seven. Reimer is riding a very intelligent and sensible race. He is watching exactly where he is. He is looking to see where Maudsley is. He is judging his race speed and his tactics. He goes wide there, and that gives Maudsley, who was on a tighter line, the opportunity to close up. And Maudsley could get through on the inside at Abbey here. He's got the right line, but he doesn't. Coming through now to complete lap seven. Three laps to go at the end of this one. Reimer carves across and into Woodcote at some 115 miles an hour on these 350 production machines. Over the line, the lap time, 1 minute 43.2, marginally slower, but still well inside the lap record. There's been a new lap record, according to my timing, every lap except the first standing start lap, and now Maudsley retakes the lead. He took the lead as they went into Beckett's, as he had done on the previous two laps, and that is Reimer's danger point, and Reimer will have to watch Maudsley, who's through into the lead now, on the ninth and tenth laps. Now, but now, now, Reimer's got the inside line, you see, the tighter you can keep into the centre of the circuit there if the other rider goes wide the faster you can get out of it and that's exactly what Terry Reimer did as a result of which well he's leaning on Maudsley a bit there I don't think Maudsley will be too happy about that as they go into Stowe Corner Maudsley Right, Reimer almost turns round and pushes Maudsley away. He had his left hand right off the bars there. Pivoted his body round on his hips. Looks back without losing any forward progress at all. And so now they come up from club corner to Abbey again. Reimer absolutely on the ragged edge to come through and complete lap eight. 
still riding consistently at about three seconds inside the lap record, which was just under 100 miles an hour, and is now over 102, nearly 103 miles an hour. Another lap completed. Into the ninth and last lap of one. One minute, 43.2, amazingly consistent. They're coming up to a tail ender. If he gets in the way, things could change. Maudsley going for the inside. Now, this is the point where Maudsley, in the past, has taken the lead, and he's going to do it again, and he does it again. But this is also where Terry Reimer keeps the inside line. Maudsley hasn't been able to get a full machine's legs in front of him, and Reimer's kept the inside. And now they're coming up. This tail end is going to get a nasty shock in a moment. And he does so, but in the process, he balks. Uh, he balks Reimer. And Graham Turnbull from Stockton on Tees balked Reimer. But Reimer has fought back incredibly, although Bortley is in the lead, and Reimer's right over. Wow. Down the hangar straight. This lap and the next one. The next one is the last one. They will get pit signals, and I'm going to be watching watching them as they go down the finishing straight to see if I can see those signals and what they say. I don't think they'll need any, any guidance from the pits. They both know they're first and second, and they both know that they will then have some three miles in which to stamp their dominance on the race by winning it. Dominance is not quite the right word. They have both dominated it. And Dean Askin, by the way, is still in third position. In fourth place, it's Ricky McMillan. In fifth place, it's Adrian Jupp. And in sixth position, it's Julian Scott. But this is the excitement and interest. We stay with the battle for the lead, which is coming up to the end of the ninth lap at Woodcote, the start of the tenth and last lap, with Terry Reimer in the lead on his way if he finishes in first place at the end of this lap and they go over the line together so last time into cops 90 miles an hour Reimer leads Maudsley second to Maggots the left-hander to Beckett's the right hand, and this time Reimer has got enough of a lead over Maudsley to prevent the Blackpool man, Kevin Maudsley, from getting ahead of him as they started going down the hangar straight. And I think that this is going to be by the fastest lap that we've had. It looks as though all the time, number 17, 18 year old Ter Terry Reimer, riding a brilliantly mature and what a saucy look he gives there as he looks over his right shoulder to Kevin Maudsley. As, us, as if to say, catch me if you can, and I don't think he can now. Down the hangar straight for the last time. That's 130 miles an hour as he goes into Stowe Corner. Terry Reimer has ridden, is riding a race that we will remember for a long, long time, and somebody's off, as you can see, underneath the express bridge. Now, that's what they're approaching now. This is what Terry Reimer is approaching. There's a problem on the approach to the express bridge. Is he going to slow down? Is Kevin Mortley going to slow down? What are they going to see as they come out of Abbey, up to Woodcote for the last time? A tremendous problem for them both. The yellow flags are waving, and that means taking it easy and, and Reimer frantically looks over his shoulder to see where Mortley is and Mortley's going to try and go through on the inside but they're holding it as they go into Woodcote and Mortley is riding around the outside of Reimer to try and take the lead but Reimer wins and waves his arm victoriously in the air a brilliant victory nearly marred by the problems on the approach to the Daily Express bridge on the last lap but Terry Reimer has ridden an absolutely magnificent race, as has Kevin Maudsley, and good, good friends, the best of friendship, they shake hands at the end of the race, good sportsmanship after a brilliant race by both of them. That's what a good race that was. Mind you, I think they just use it as practice to become delivery boys and cut me up round London. Anyway, the